Hi, welcome to A Grey Barn Rising. I'm here this evening with Bootsy, and I'm reading the poems of the Mexican poet Octavio Paz. Octavio Paz lived from 1914 to 1998, and he is um, one of the most uh, significant poets of Mexico. He spent a great deal of time in foreign service. He was uh, a diplomat and an ambassador. He spent time in uh, Paris, in New York, and a great deal of time in India, where he also studied Buddhism and Hinduism. Those, uh, the Eastern wisdom traditions actually flavor his work and pour into his work in uh, many ways in which they inform his other sensibilities, particularly surrealism, Marxism, and existentialism. And these areas of interest all come together in a very interesting way in, in the poems of Paz. So I have selected a few poems that I wanted to share with you from different uh, parts of different times in his career. And I'd like to begin with a later poem called Proem. And let's see what the page number is here. Proem. He writes an awful lot, Paz does, about how language itself operates. And one of the, the basic tensions in a Paz poem throughout his work is the um, interaction of language and silence. Oh, and I don't want to forget to, uh, to mention that I'm reading from the collected poems right now. I'll be reading from another book as well, but both books that I'll be reading from this evening are translated by Elliot Weinberger who is the, the great translator of Octavio Paz. Proem. At times poetry is the vertigo of bodies and the vertigo of joy and the vertigo of death. The walk with eyes closed along the edge of the cliff and the verbena in submarine gardens. The laughter that sets fire to rules and the holy commandments the descent of parachuting words onto the sands of the page, the despair that boards a paper boat and crosses for 40 nights and 40 days, the night sorrow sea and the day sorrow desert. The idolatry of the self and the desecration of the self and the dissipation of the self, the beheading of epithets the burial of mirrors, the recollection of pronouns freshly cut in the garden of Epicurus, in the garden of Neza Wau Coyote, the flute solo on the terrace of memory, and the dance of flames in the cave of thought, the migrations of millions of verbs, wings and claws, seeds and hands, the nouns bony and full of roots, planted on the waves of language, the love unseen and the love unheard and the love unsaid, the love in love, syllable seeds. Bootsy seems invigorated by Octavio Paz. Uh, as I mentioned, that's, that's a poem really about poetry and about how language itself operates. Here's a very early poem from his, uh, an early book of his titled, the, the book is titled East Slope, but this is Golden Lotuses One. He has a, a more than one poem about Golden Lotuses. Neither hot coal nor shot of sherry the shock of an electric eel, or more exact, the crack of silk ripped apart. Two, in the transparent pouch of the travel kit, everything's asleep except the scissors. Three, in the middle of the night, she drops in the ears of her lovers, 
three drops of cold light. Four. She slips, yellow, electric, past the pool and the hall. Later, silent, she shines, dumb as a precious stone. I neglected to mention that that poem is in four parts. Uh, there, there is another poem called Lotuses, but this Lotuses one is in four parts. I understand I could have been confusing. The other. He invented a face for himself. Behind it, he lived, died, and was resurrected many times. His face now has the wrinkles from that face. His wrinkles have no face. I think you can hear the tonal shift between those early poems and uh, his, uh, the later work that I began with. Speaking of later work, I wanted to, to move to a, a book that is not an early book. This is Eagle or Sun. This was the first Octavio Paz book I ever came to. It really blew me away. I was uh, particularly in its um, depth of ex exploration of the unconscious and surrealism. And I wanted to, to share a couple of poems from this book. This first poem is called Valley of Mexico, and this is a prose poem. Many of the poems, most, if not all of the poems, I think, I think all of the poems in this book are written in, in prose. Valley of Mexico. The day unfolds its transparent body, tied to the solar stone. The light pounds me, with its great invisible hammers. I am only a pause between one vibration and the next. The living point, the sharp, quiet point fixed at the intersection of two glances that ignore each other and meet within me. Do they make a pact? I am pure space, the battleground. Through my body, I see my other body, the stone, sparkles. The sun rips out my eyes. Two stars smooth their red feathers in my empty sockets. Splendor, spiral of wings and a ferocious beak. And now my eyes sing, peer into its song. Throw yourself into the fire. There's a, what some Surrealist scholars will call a thonic landscape in an Octavio Paz poem. This is a, a term used to describe Latin American Surrealism often, and that's this, this sense that the landscape is alive and ignited, the sense of ignited matter, uh, that everything is alive. So here's a, a poem called, a very strange poem called Night Walk. Also from Eagle or Sun. Also, as I mentioned, Elliot Weinberger is the translator of Eagle or Sun as well. Night Walk. Night draws from its body one hour after another, each different, each solemn. Grapes, figs, sweet drops of quiet blackness, fountains, bodies. Wind plays the piano among the stones of the ruined garden. The lighthouse stretches its neck, turns, goes out, cries out. Crystals of thought dims, softness, invitations, night, immense and shining leaf plucked from the invisible tree that grows at the center of the world. Around the corner, apparitions. The girl who becomes a pile of withered leaves if you touch her. The stranger who pulls off his mask and remains faceless, fixedly staring at you. The ballerina who spins on the point of a scream. The who goes there. The who are you. The where am I. The girl who moves like a murmur of birds. The great tower destroyed by inconclusive thought. 
open to the sky like a poem split in two. No, none of these is the one you wait for, the sleeper who waits for you in the folds of her dream. Around the corner, plants end and stones begin. There is nothing, nothing you can give the desert, not a drop of water, not a drop of blood. You move with bandaged eyes through corridors, plazas, alleys where three vile stars conspire. The river speaks softly. To your left, to your right, ahead, behind, whispers and cruel laughter. The monologue traps you at every step with its exclamations, its question marks, its noble sentiments, its dots over the eyes in the middle of a kiss, its mill of laments, its repertory of broken mirrors. Go on. There's nothing you can say to yourself. The intensity of that poem, I have um, turned to that poem over and again for years, and it never ceases to uh, blow me away. I'd like to close with um, the title poem of the book, Eagle or Sun, which has a question mark in the title, Eagle or Sun. There are a couple of poems in this book that are written in italics. This is one, and the, the closing poem uh, is one as well. In fact, um, in the closing poem, I wish I had time to read it. Um, but I want to give you a line from it because I think it's totemic of what Octavio Paz's poetics epitomize, what they strive to do. And that's this line. The poem creates a loving order. The poem creates a loving order. And his, his work is really there in many ways to find that order, to orchestrate order and chaos both, the conscious and the unconscious minds together. Eagle or Sun. I begin and begin again and do not move forward. When I reach the fatal letters, my pen falls back in implacable prohibition blocks the way. Yesterday, in full possession of my powers, I wrote fluently on some loose page, a bit of sky, a wall undaunted before the sun and my eyes, a meadow, another body. I could use anything, the writing of the wind, of the birds, water, stone, Adolescence, earth plowed by a fixed idea, body tattooed with images, gleaming scars. Autumn led great rivers to pasture, hoarded splendors on the peaks, sculpted riches in the valley of Mexico. Immortal phrases engraved by the light on pure blocks of wonder. Today, I fight alone with a word, the word which belongs to me and to which I belong, heads or tails, eagle or sun. I love the way that poem closes, the, the suspension of those seeming contradictions, heads or tails, uh, eagle or sun, and bringing that together in this wonderful juxtaposition. I think it's, it's incredible. Paz um, was a Nobel laureate winner. He, was a, he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1990. His work is readily available. I read from the collected poems of Octavio Paz, translated by Elliot Weinberger, and I also read from Eagle or Sun, translated by Elliot Weinberger. Paz's work, as I mentioned, it's immense, not only in its size, but in its scope. 
because Paz's vision is so broad and it's so deep and so significant. I very much hope that you will uh, investigate his work further and, um, and read it as often as you can. Thank you so much for joining Bootsy and me for another episode of A Grey Barn Rising.